How do you get even emergence in your cornfield? Well, as we've talked to high yield farmers from around the country and really around the world, they talk so much about, you know what, we want every plant to come up the same day, if at all possible. If plants come up at the same time, they have an equal chance for high yield. And you know what, you're gonna have more total yield. So today we wanna to talk about some of the things you may consider on your farm this spring to get that great even emergence. It's really frustrating, Brian, because we ask farmers like that that say, well, you gotta have even emergence. Well, what do you do to get it? They don't have one answer. There's a whole bunch of things that they have to do right. And it really all starts with the planter. And when we think about it, we've got to have a really good seed bed to start with. Now, oftentimes as you're doing tillage in the field, you may be doing tillage at an angle because the residue is flowing through a little bit better or because you're trying to solve some certain issue that's happened out in the field. But as you're going at an angle, uh, it's been talked about for many, many years, really as long as I've been involved in farming, that if you're going at an angle and then you're going to plant kind of kitty corner across that next spring, you're going to create some issues there because your planter's always going to be moving. It's never going to be an even surface all the way across that planter. Now, certainly planters can make some adjustment for that, uh, but getting that tillage right, getting that seed bed right, dealing with the residue that's out there, getting that incorporated and chopped up and so forth, those, key, those are just absolute keys to getting even emergence. Well, one of the big things for us when Darren talks about, hey, get the planter right, Certainly there are adjustments you can do, but it's gotten a lot easier with the precision planting stuff that we've put on our planter. So I think about oh, that down thank you, pressure. Brian. Thank you, Brian. How long did it take for me to convince you that we needed well, to invest in this? And here's one of the things. There wasn't a simple answer, though, 10 it's, years ago. And it's not a cheap fix. It's not like you say, well, I'm going to put precision planting parts in my planter, and, you know, here we go. We'll just roll. Well, then you get the bill. And you realize, oh my goodness, this is a big investment. And so some guys really have a hard time pulling the trigger on that. And here's the other thing, if you've got one planter, it's not like you're gonna say, well, I'm just gonna put it on half the planter and not the other half. No, you're gonna do all or nothing. So you don't really have a side-by-side -side you're gonna do out on your farm. So it's tough to understand what that return on investment is going to be. Let me tell you, on our farm, it's been very good. Okay, so the first thing with that is just the down pressure. It really can vary as you go throughout the field because you might have heavier soil, lighter soil. You might have had areas where you mudded the crop out last fall, or maybe just you drove a grain cart across the field and now you've got some extra bad compaction in a certain spot that you didn't get taken care of. That down pressure is going to need to vary based on your soil conditions. That's something that your planter can now do for itself it's pretty awesome. Well, there have been manual adjustments forever, Brian, but think about it. How often were you jumping out of the tractor, running behind the planter and making big adjustments every time you switch soil types or, or management practices in the field? Nobody was doing that. Maybe on a field by field basis, you may say this field's more lighter, fluffier soil in general, so I'll make a change. This one's a little harder, I'll make a change. But I look at our own farm and we're lifting more often than we're pressing down harder. So it's one of those things that has made a huge difference for us too. All right, so we talked about have a good seed bed, get your planter adjusted right, maybe have precision planting or something else that can make that real easy so your planter can make adjustments itself as you go through the field. All that stuff is really important. But what I wanna kinda of come back to is, look, I love to plant when the soil is cold. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't love to plant when the soil is cold, but I have to plant when the soil is cold. So if you're going to plant when the soil is cold and you still want even emergence, what are you gonna have to do? You're gonna need insecticide. You're gonna need some more fungicide, both seed treatment and in furrow. You're probably gonna wanna use some biologicals and definitely a very low rate of low salt fertilizer. You've gotta do everything possible to pop that seed out of the ground as quickly as you can, understanding that seed's gonna be under a lot of stress. We have found that by doing these things, we can go out there and plant our corn when it's 40, 45 degrees and still get just as good and just as even a stand as a guy that wants to wait until the soil temp is 55 degrees. I've got one more thing I wanna to add to that too, Brian. When we think about moisture conditions, and I talk to farmers like us who are dry land farmers saying, well, my moisture situation is a little uneven going across the field. I get it. That's part of the reason we're moving a little bit of soil with the planter and so forth to try to get some good moist soil right around our seed. If you've got irrigation, right after you plant, you can water that field evenly. You've got a huge advantage where you've got one of the factors that you're gonna need for even emergence taken care of. 
Dry land farmers, yes, we want to have a little bit of moisture in that soil as we're planting and that's going to help quite a bit. Or if we can time it out that, hey, there's rain coming in a few days, let's get everything in the ground and then get some rain naturally on our field, we can accomplish the same thing. All right, the last thing I've got here is planting depth. You know, it's something we've talked about for years and we start looking at all these other things to even emergence, we can't forget about planting depth. We want even planting depth, obviously. But the other side of that is, what is the right depth? Well, we don't want it at an inch and a half or less, so you're gonna have nodal roots above ground. We don't want it at deeper than two and a half inches, or it's gonna be hard to have even emergence because your plant's got a lot more to push through. So most of the time when we talk corn, we're talking two inches, maybe two and a quarter inch planting depth. Uh, oh, there is one other thing that I guess I should mention here too, the orientation of your seed. If somebody could ever invent a planter where you could have the germ pointing down, you absolutely would have more even emergence. That is a real key. We've proven that in the lab. Just unfortunately, there is no planter today that can put the germ down on the seed corn all the time. Well, there are planters that can put the seed in just the exact way you want them. They use seed tape, but we don't have that for corn planters just yet. So we have to do all the other things that we can do to impact an even emergence in our cornfields. Well, even emergence is a key if you want higher yields, but so is weed control. Can you identify our Weed of the Week? 